Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for the Future Homes Ottawa Roundup this evening. My name is Sharon Coward, I'm the ED for Enviro Centre. Before we start, I would like to acknowledge that the Future Homes Ottawa project took place on the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. We recognize that the land on which we live and work has been inhabited and cared for for millennia before us. And that it is our, it is our duty as descendants of colonial settlers or re more recent immigrants to work for justice and reconciliation with the original inhabitants. Just a few logistical notes before we dive into the event. Please do remember to keep yourself muted during the presentations. We will be recording this event for later viewing for everyone who has registered. We will be monitoring questions in the chat box. So please type them in there and we'll bring them forward to the presenter at the end of their presentation or discussion. And this event will be in English, but if anyone has questions that they would prefer to ask in French, please do put them in the chat and our staff will address them. So for those of you who don't know us as an organization, Enviro Center is a not-for-profit environmental organization based right here in Ottawa. Our core mission supports sustainable lifestyles, which means that we encourage people to take action on climate in their own lives. And that means in their homes, their workplaces, their businesses, their communities, and right here in our city. By pointing folks toward practical ways to reduce their environmental impact, we help them make lasting positive change. Our work focuses on four key impact areas and they are green homes, green transportation, green business, and green lifestyle. This event tonight is the wrap up of the first phase of the Future Homes Ottawa Residential Retrofit Pilot Project. Future Homes Ottawa Phase One set out to create tools raise resident awareness and start neighborhood projects that would lay the groundwork for the mass deep retrofit work that needs to take place in Ottawa over the next two decades to meet our emissions reduction targets and to ensure our homes are resilient enough to weather the coming climate changes. The scope of the project was pretty ambitious, but our aims were pretty simple. So we aim to create clear communications tools and test the ones that were most effective. We aim to develop a clear reporting tool that would take the information from the standard EnerGuide audit and provide homeowners with easily understandable good, better, best retrofit recommendations to eventually help them to bring their homes to net zero energy consumption. We aim to deliver this report to 40 homeowners in the target neighborhoods, which were Carlington and Old Ottawa South. We aim to identify six homes, three in each neighborhood, who would act as a demonstration retrofit home for the region, completing a deep retrofit and allowing our project team to share their work as case studies for their neighbors and for other residents of Ottawa. We aim to support these homeowners through their project planning by providing retrofit planning support and expert guidance. We also aim to finish the project ready to launch a phase two project that would see the demonstration home retrofit projects to completion and see the work of the project scale into a mass retrofit pilot initiative. We aim to provide a template for action for our partners, our friends and communities across the country who are also trying to get off, get the work off this ground in, get, the, get this work off the ground in their own towns and communities. We succeeded in our aims. The next step of this project is to move on to phase two, where we take our learnings, our tools, our network of relationships, and we build a mass retrofit project model for Ottawa that can get the ball rolling towards the types of retrofits we need to meet our targets. You're going to hear a bit more about these targets later on in the presentations, but suffice to say, meeting our emissions reduction targets for the residential building sector means retrofitting around 20,000 single family homes per year until 2040. This is the core problem at the root of this project. But before we get into next steps, we want to take some time today to go over what we achieved and learned in this project. We will be hosting breakout rooms later on the session to go over some key home retrofit topics. We'll be hearing from a community group that is very fired up to accelerate climate action. And we'll be hearing from a homeowner deep in the midst of his own home retrofit project. We have all that in store for you today. So with no further ado, I would like to introduce Councillor Riley Brockington the councillor for River Ward, whose Carlington neighbourhood was one of the focus neighbourhoods for phase one of the Future Homes Ottawa project. Councillor Brockington is a lifelong resident of his ward and has served the city as city councillor since 2014. He serves currently as a member of the Planning Committee, the Environment Committee, the Transit Commission, the Ottawa Public Library Board, and Built Heritage Subcommittee. 
So thank you so much for joining us today, Councillor Brockington. I'm going to pass it over to you for a few opening remarks. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Sharon. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction and uh, welcoming me to tonight's uh, wrap up of this great pilot project. And I do want to acknowledge uh, Councillor Menard, my colleague and friend to the north of my ward who's joining us uh, tonight. Um, what a fantastic pilot project. I do want to thank the, in the Enviro Centre for leading the Ottawa Future Homes pilot, in particular Brody Kinnear, her entire team. And when I first heard about this, uh, my immediate re reaction was, how can I get involved? Uh, River Ward is an urban ward, 50,000 people. And some of our neighborhoods, two of our six neighborhoods are over 75 years old and there is housing to match uh, that vintage. And I'm truly grateful that the Carlington community was one of two communities selected um, for the Ottawa Future Homes pilot, as mentioned, uh, the first neighborhood retrofit project of its kind uh, in our great city. Uh, the goals of this project were to share practical information about deep retrofits, engage homeowners, and identify demonstration project homes. Uh, my office helped to raise awareness and share information and recruit prospective participants. As we know, housing and transportation remain the two main contributors to GHGs in Ottawa, and City Council has set aggressive targets for GHG reduction over the coming decades. Uh, within our cities, we just heard there needs to be significant movement of retrofits to residential housing of, we've heard 20,000 plus homes per year over the next uh, two decades or so. That's a significant target. The cities supported or demonstrated support for this project through the Better Homes Ottawa Loan Program and it's a key part of the strategy to reduce climate emissions and build a resilient city. The many benefits, as we know, of retrofitting our homes include re reduced emissions and energy use, improved health and comfort, reduced energy bills, and improved resiliency against extreme weather events. So this project, the Future Homes Ottawa project, helped set the stage for scaling up this work. And I'm truly grateful for that. We must go forward from this pilot to a much larger program. So let's, my personal comments are let's not wait to watch our friends and neighbors do things um, when they make important decisions to their homes or amend the mode of transportation that they select and modify our own decisions and behaviors, not tomorrow, but today. We really need to make these decisions today. So once again, thank you very much to the Enviro Center for your leadership on the Ottawa Future Homes pilot, and we hope to see a lot more of this great program going forward. So thank you very much for everyone's contributions and efforts for this pilot. And again, thank you for inviting me to join you this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brockington, for joining us this evening and for your ongoing support of this program. Uh, now to Melanie Johnson, the Director of Energy Programs here at Enviro Centre. Uh, uh, who will give us an overview of what the program has achieved and our lessons learned in the first phase of the project. Melanie Johnson has been working through the province of Ontario, helping homeowners discover the most energy efficient and financially viable ways to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions through their home energy use. Over the past 15 years, Melanie has been advising people of how to make their homes more comfortable through meaningful retrofits and home upgrades. Off to you, Melanie. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate it. Let me just navigate my tech my tech here share my screen and we will go ahead with the presentation i can figure out how to start my slideshow from the beginning here we go all right so the roadmap to engagement and what we've learned for future homes ottawa so first, what is Future Homes Ottawa? It's our city's first neighborhood retrofit project and our pilot locations were Carlington and Old Ottawa South. Again, the aims were to raise awareness around home energy retrofits, develop tools to support deep energy retrofits and to create neighborhood demonstration projects. 
So for the local context, residential buildings contribute more than 20% of our uh, greenhouse gas emissions in the city of Ottawa. And to reach our climate targets, as mentioned, we need to retrofit 27% of buildings by 2030 and 98% of residential buildings by 2040. Well, back to Sharon's magic number of 20,000 per year, we're looking at about 340,000 homes uh, in total. So the first phase of future homes, Ottawa did not set out to directly reduce emissions, but rather to lay the necessary groundwork for the full rollout of a larger scale retrofit project. This part of the project is focused on raising awareness and engaging with local residents. We have compiled our activities, learnings and outcomes in a report available soon on our website, betterhomesottawa slash future homes. <clears throat> So Future Homes Ottawa's 10 steps really in uh, the community engagement. We'll get into these very specifically. Step one was to gather knowledgeable stakeholders, which we were super successful in, a lot of whom are on the, the call today, and we really appreciate everybody's time and effort in joining us. So we had monthly meetings with stakeholders that maintained consistent touch points and ensured immediate feedback and input. Attendance and participation remained high. Our newsletter subscribers grew by 219% from May of 2021 to March of 2022. And we had a high average open rate of 49%. One challenge uh, was getting trade enterprises to the table due to conflicting schedules and priorities. Step two is to understand our audience. So we developed a robust community selection matrix to evaluate and select pilot neighborhoods. And thanks to our partnership with the city of Ottawa, we had access to neighborhood level environics analytics reports, which provided detailed demographics, social values, and behavioral overviews. We were also able to develop homeowner profiles to help identify the best ways to communicate and engage with our target communities. Step three was to develop and implement supporting tools. So we designed and developed the Better Homes Ottawa website based on the successful model of Better Homes Toronto. And we worked closely with leading experts in the field to create a one of its kind stepped recommendations to net zero report and audit component tool, something I'm particularly proud of. We developed a home retrofit planner service to provide homeowners with extra support and guidance in their retrofit journey. Step four, we developed an outreach and engagement approach. So our expertise in outreach and engagement, as well as our initial research proved valuable in helping us to identify key approaches. We worked closely with local community associations, counselors, and local organizations and businesses to identify neighborhood specific opportunities, such as well attended events or highly engaged virtual channels. <clears throat> and partnering with well established community organizations provided us with a direct line to residents. Hmm. Step five, we developed a location specific comm strategy. So hyper-localized um, communications proved to be a successful approach. We used door hangers, in-person outreach at local events, word of mouth, lawn signs uh, are among some of the communication strategies that we used. And a recognizable brand and supporting materials helped build trust and awareness. So a logo and consistent graphics, outreach staff in branded hats and masks, we had booths and we had flags. <clears throat> Planning data collection and evaluation tools was step six. So identifying measurable targets and goals is key and which tools will enable you to keep track of those also really important and really important to make sure that you do this early on in the process and that you are regularly carrying out data analysis and tracking through surveys, analytics, et cetera. <clears throat> Step seven was engaging with community networks and, cha uh, and champions. So engaging with community networks and champions was a significant component of the pilot. And throughout the project, we connected with city councillors, shared project updates with community associations and other community partners, ensured the wider community was kept up to date through regular blasts on social media and EnviroCenter channels. Uh, step eight was engaging residents and households. So we tested a variety of different approaches, including surveys, booths, door-to-door -door outreach, media presence, especially in community newspapers. We did some direct mail outs, virtual events, and social media. One challenge with many activities being online due to the pandemic, though, was reaching populations for whom technology is a barrier, such as seniors. Step nine, evaluate, evaluate your progress. As mentioned in step six, a number of desired outcomes were identified early on in the project, and we were able to measure progress against these targets. 
So our follow-up in resident engagement survey found that 80% of neighborhood residents were aware of the project. We had a target of 80%. 100% of the neighborhood residents supportive of the project, we had a target of 60, and 83% of neighborhood residents were interested in retrofitting their homes for energy efficiency. And again, we had a target of 30%. So some really great progress there based on our engagement survey. And the last step is to share your success and your findings, which is what we're doing right now. Um, so you will be able to visit Better Homes Ottawa slash Future Homes to read our full report um, and sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date with the next phase of the project. We expect that report will be up uh, next week. So Sharon touched on um, some of the deliverables and outcomes, but just to reiterate, um, some of the deliverables we had were to conduct energy audits on 40 homes, 20 per neighborhood, check. We developed and created net zero step recommendation reports are in the process of getting uh, the remaining out to our uh, homeowners that participated in the program. We were able to create an application form and a selection matrix for our demonstration homes and select six demo homes, three per neighborhood. We have developed a comprehensive retrofit project plan for all six demo homes, which will be going out to homeowners in the coming days. And we developed and delivered a series of workshops and webinars to raise awareness on retrofit techniques and technologies. So these are where I get to a little text heavy friends, but really what we learned, um, pretty important outcomes. So we touched on this over and over again, but we felt that the best way to raise resident aware awareness was to work with active community groups that are already established and trusted to get the word out and add validity to our work. Neighborhood level outreach and awareness building activities are effective and should be expanded to other neighborhoods where resources allow. Supporting the establishment of active engaged neighborhood and viral crews who can catalyze local interest and action should be a focal point in phase two. A net zero step recommendations report is useful, possible, and can be produced with relatively, relatively little resources. More tools could be developed in this manner while we wait for national streamlined tools to emerge. A residential home retrofit planner service is feasible and effective. It was less expensive than we originally thought and shows some promise as a sustainable, as a, sorry, a sustainable service, especially if it were to qualify uh, for inclusion in emerging funding and financing model. The model needs to be tested with a larger sample group to observe outcomes and assess potential process efficiencies. Uh, the fifth thing that we learned was that we need better regional data collection to support progress in this work, both for communications approaches and progress in emissions slash energy consumption reduction in the residential sector. This data will support a better understanding of the scale of the task and the pace of progress, while also supporting the case for the financial supports that we'll, we will be required to accelerate the citywide project. We also need a regional communications approach to continue the work of raising awareness of residential retrofits in tandem with neighborhood specific outreach. While uptake in retrofits is improved by neighborhood outreach, in, in particular consumer confidence to complete the retrofit, the scale of the work to be done demands a more streamlined regional approach with a broader reach. We learned that partners want to collaborate on this work, but have limited capacity to organize the process. We received positive responses and, and levels of engagement from a wide range of partners. Actors in the sector are ready to move, but struggling to find the, uh, the capacity to play a planning and facilitating role and could help jumpstart an effective local collaboration to move work forward. Last of my heavy uh, text heavy slides, I promise. Um, funders and partners are eager to see mass retrofit work uh, move forward. There is consensus in the local environmental community that the work of residential retrofits is an urgent priority, while funders and partners are rightly nervous about untried and emerging models and the ability of local actors to effectively mobilize the models. We all recognize that someone needs to take the first step, and as such, we are willing to take on a certain level of risk to see progress. Trades need to be engaged to support this work in a way that supports their business models and avoids revenue loss. The local trades enterprises are interested in and supportive of the work of deep residential retrofits, but they're busy and struggling with capacity. Their interest and engagement will be secured through opportunities to participate in on the ground projects with 20 plus homes that can concurrently act as an upskilling opportunity and a business opportunity. 
And lastly, we need to forge forward and start trying things to make them happen. There are no expert practitioners working on the ground with the capacity to effectively scale residential retrofits today. This process, network and trades capacity will need to be established and the sooner we start, the better. It is time to start trying the impossible and testing the most promising models in action in our communities. So what's next for us is phase two, where we hope to build local homeowner interest in net zero and net zero ready retrofits, prepare Ottawa trades to execute mass retrofits over the coming years and position Ottawa to take advantage of emerging supports for national mass retrofits. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for that comprehensive overview, Melanie. Next up, we'll hear from the Enviro Crew, a community organization based in Old Ottawa South and works in collaboration with the Old Ottawa South Community Association to support a variety of environmental initiatives. The folks at the Enviro Crew were an extremely important partner in the Future Homes in Ottawa project, helping us connect with the neighborhood residents, organize community events, and host virtual informational webinars. Today, we have Holly Bickerton joining us to speak about the Enviro Crew and their involvement in the Future Homes Ottawa project. Holly, take it away. Thank you, Ben, uh, and thanks for inviting me to Enviro Center. Um, I will just, I know we have an Ottawa wide audience here, so I'll just tell you a little bit about Enviro Crew. Um, I'm a member of Enviro Crew. Enviro Crew, as we're known, if Old Ottawa South started in a living room in February 2020, and you'll recognize the, the importance of that date. Um, and shortly after that, we effectively went entirely online. So um, from that time, with maybe a handful of people, we've grown into a core committee of probably about 20 um, with five different task teams that encompass at least uh, 60 residents of Old Ottawa South. Um, we have a Facebook, an active Facebook membership of about 400. We have a, a newsletter as well, a digital newsletter that reaches another about 300 subscribers. Um, and we're all active in our community. So um, uh, one of our task teams, if we can call it that, is Environment and Climate Action. And we, so when we heard uh, about future homes, uh, we had actually already, we were familiar with Enviro Center. We uh, had had one event already um, previous to that, which was on insulation. And so we were really very excited to learn that Old Ottawa South had been chosen as a, as a pilot neighborhood. Um, we have basically very similar goals, particularly our climate action group, very similar goals in terms of uh, encouraging retrofits. And so we were pretty excited to work with Enviro Center. Um, I think that one of the things that we have learned as well, and just to echo what Melanie has said, is that many homeowners are very interested in uh, starting retrofits in their home, they may not be familiar with how to start. There may be significant barriers, uh, communication barriers or information barriers. And oftentimes we just have found that that direct neighbor to neighbor um, leadership and contact has really made a difference, a big difference in people's comfort level in terms of adopting retrofits to understand what contractors to use, how to go about it, what, what to expect, costs and so on. So we were really excited about the program in general. We, um, we, I think we were involved in at least four different joint events from helping with uh, Enviro Center to attend one of our events to find demonstration, potential demonstration homeowners, um, but then also uh, events just like this actually, uh, Zoom events and so on to communicate directly, that direct line that Melanie was talking about with residents through all of our different channels. So I could say the thing, the thing that I think uh, Enviro Crew um, brought to this, and I should also add that Enviro Crew is, has since that time become uh, a committee of our community association. So the Old Ottawa South Community Association. So we, we kind of also have that um, link to the community association and, uh, and a more formal voice, I guess. Um, so for what we could bring were those local connections, the knowledge of the neighborhood, the knowledge of the communications uh, 
voices, I guess, the communications methods, our local newspaper, um, and of course, all of our personal contacts. And in some cases, that was also local environmental uh, pilot, uh, pioneers, I guess, if you like, um, who could provide that neighbor to neighbor type of support. So for us, what Enviro Center was critical to us for was the technical expertise. So for us to be able to call on that technical, technical expertise on uh, webinars and even directly with, with neighbors was fantastic. The communication support was really helpful to us. We obviously have no staff, <laughs> we're all volunteers. Social media expertise, um, publicity, it was really a fantastic partnership for us. Um, I, I, I don't have the statistics. I've seen the statistics that uh, Enviro Crew, Enviro Center has shared. Um, and it's, it's great to know that this is successful. Anecdotally, I've certainly heard that it's successful. We continue to receive uh, questions about retrofits, about uh, everything from insulation to heat pumps. And so I think a lot of that is due to this partnership. Um, so we're very excited that it's been regarded as successful because we certainly feel that way. Um, and we're looking forward to phase two. Um, we have lots of work to do. One thing I would suggest, if there's anybody listening uh, on the call who's in a community group with an environmental focus, there's nothing particularly magic about the formula that we had. I think it's something that any community group could replicate. Um, it's been fantastic for us. Uh, I think one of the things that makes Enviro's crew a really great organization is that just a, a neighborhood camaraderie, if you like, um, and a willingness on the part of everybody to try new stuff. And we certainly also get that, get that sense and that energy from Enviro Center. So, so thank you for your support. A big thanks to Melanie and Brody, who we've been most in contact with, but all the Enviro Center folks. Um, we're really looking forward to phase two. Thank you for your insight and passion, Holly. Uh, we do love having the Enviro crew. And as you mentioned, we, we do hope that there are more groups like yours as we continue the Future Homes Project, uh, project in its next phase. Um, next up, we would like to show you all a video that outlines the way uh, that we uh, work to make future homes happen. Hi, I'm Lilia and I'm an Outreach Coordinator with EnviroCenter. Our organization works to help reduce greenhouse gas emissions in Ottawa. Today I'm out in the neighborhoods of Carlington and Old Ottawa South to knock on doors and hopefully get people excited about making their homes more energy efficient. The outreach we are doing today is part of Future Homes Ottawa, our city's first neighborhood retrofit project. Buildings produce almost half our city's greenhouse gases. The math tells us that for Ottawa to reach its climate targets, 98% of existing homes have to undergo a deep retrofit by 2040. From a financial perspective, there has never been a better time to get energy upgrades in your home, as there are multiple incentive and rebate programs homeowners can benefit from. Hi, I'm Henok Abraham. I am an energy advisor and I have been at the Enviro Centre for 10 years. A deep energy retrofit can reduce your home's energy consumption by as much as 50%. A deep energy retrofit includes different kinds of upgrades, from improving your building envelope to replacing your gas furnace with a heat pump. There are other benefits too. Deep retrofit improves our homes, making them healthier and more resilient. An added bonus is that in the long term, they make our homes less expensive to cool and heat. So if you're a homeowner, visit betterhomesottawa.ca slash futurehomes to get started. And if you're an agency with funds, get in touch. And if you're not from Ottawa and want to learn how to build something similar in your community, we want to hear from you. Uh, you've heard us talk about phase one for this pilot throughout the evening and maybe wondering what's next. Sharon Coward, the Executive Director for Enviro Center, will be giving us more information on the next steps for the Future Homes Ottawa project. Thank you, Ben. 
going to get my presentation shared. Oh, doesn't that just figure? It's disappear. Apologies, just gave me a second. Should be able to find it. There we go. So it's the challenge of having too many things open when you're doing a presentation. There we go. Okay. So as Ben mentioned and, and other folks have mentioned, this, this presentation is really largely focused on the work of phase one, but the reality is that we developed phase one as part of a three phase program. And so it was always intended to, to move into the second phase and be part of this bigger regional retrofit project. So we're gonna spend a few minutes talking about that a little bit, um, just to circle back to the the high level targets of, of phase one, we were working to raise awareness around energy retrofits, support deep energy retrofits, which means uh, energy savings of more than 50% and create neighborhood demonstration projects. So the plan in phase one was to do this using three steps. So engagement, some of the stuff that you've heard a lot about already in this presentation, we, we did community meetings, marketing, in-person outreach. We used our, our home assessments to do some promotion for for awareness of these types of retrofits. A second component was to develop, to develop the tools. And so you've heard about the tools that we've developed, including the website, the stepped net zero report, the model for the home retrofit planner service. We were building these tools partly to use them in this phase and partly to make sure we had them ready for the next stages of the project where we wanted to go a bit bigger. And then finally getting ready for these demonstration projects. So this is the kind of dual purpose of of engaging participants, seeing how these projects actually happen on the ground here in our city with, with the trades enterprises that work here, with the homeowners that live here. And then of course, producing a really great potential marketing tool to, to promote the program to other residents. So that was phase one and phase one really was the 2021 step in this path journey. And so a significant amount of, of this path was already set out before we started the project because we knew the direction that we wanted to go. And so in, in phase one, we were really laying the groundwork and engaging communities, developing the tools and, and planning for these demonstration projects. So phase two is really this 2022 to 2024 section of the steps. And so in, in this phase, we're looking to, to build out the project and start moving towards what could eventually be a mass retrofit industry in, in Ottawa. And so in this phase, we're looking at completing the demonstration projects that we've planned with homeowners, um, of course, with the support of those homeowners, expanding those tested communications methods to other places in the city. So taking the ones that work the best and applying them elsewhere, continuing to encourage regional up, uptake in, in audits and retrofit planning, of course, and, and relatedly building out our registered energy advisor capacity, which is, of course, a huge need right now. And then a really big piece of this project is moving toward beginning a mass retrofit initiative, building on the learnings from the, from the earlier project. So that's, that's a focal point. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. And then in tandem with that, working on with a with our partners, with trades, and with, with a range of collaborators in the city working on building the trades capacity to support scaled retrofits. And so the last component of the project, although this will roll out throughout the next couple of years, is actually starting to complete scaled neighborhood retrofit projects. So, so much bigger than these demonstration projects, creating a model that we can use to retrofit 20 to 50 homes in, in a collaborative process. And so that's, that's the goal of the second phase of the project, which as I touched on moves towards the dream in 2025, where we've worked to develop really a strong retrofit industry in Ottawa that can begin to replicate to support the scale of retrofits that we need to meet our targets. So Melanie stole all of my slides for her presentation. So she told me, I didn't believe her. I was like, let me know overlap, it's totally fine. So this is, a, this is a little bit of review. This is just the targets that we're looking at. And you've heard this a few times. It's just to give a sense of the huge scale of the project that we're trying to complete here in Ottawa. And just in context, right now, under 1% of homes are retrofitted each year. And that's around 4,000 and a tiny fraction of these are completing what could be considered a deep retrofit. So, we really have a huge distance to travel and we need to rapidly scale this uptake in retrofits 
and concurrently upscale the capacity of our local economy and trades to meet the demand that we expect if we're going to meet those targets. Just a quick review of what the phase two goals were. So one of the one of the outcomes of phase one was to develop a good, strong, efficient product model to deliver phase two and move this work forward. And so we identified three high level goals that we wanted to complete in the phase two project. And, and Melanie went over them, but I'm just gonna do a quick review of it. The first one was to build local homeowner interest in net zero and net zero ready retrofits. Of course, we we're already doing this work in phase one, but we have to scale that and, and move that beyond the initial neighborhoods. The second one to prepare Ottawa trades to execute mass retrofits over the coming years through a variety of ways. And third, to position Ottawa to take advantage of emerging supports for national mass retrofits. Going to dig a little bit deeper into, into those actions, sorry, into those goals. So for each goal, we put together a set of actions that we're specifically going to complete to try to meet those goals. So for the first one, which is building a local homeowner interest in net zero and net zero retrofits, we have four actions. The first one is relatively simple, completing the demonstration projects so that we can see how those projects roll out and have those marketing tools and, and some case studies that we can offer other homeowners to see how this sort of thing works. A second, expanding neighborhood outreach. So using the tools that we developed and, and the learnings that we had in phase one to take the best functioning pieces of neighborhood outreach to more neighborhoods in, in Ottawa. Third, to develop a regional communications strategy. Um, basically what we observed in this project is that we, we did see that the local outreach was really important. And all of the projects that we've spoken to and and read results from before ours really highlighted this, that, that outreach that is on the local level is tremendously important. But we also understand that it needs to go bigger than that. If we wanna start hitting the numbers that we're talking about to, to really meet our emissions reduction targets, we need a regional broad spectrum strategy for communication. So that's one of the focuses of this project. And then to establish a home retrofit planner service. So we've already developed the bones for that service and we wanna move that out as a, as a real life service on the ground. For goal two, to prepare Ottawa trades to execute mass retrofits over the coming years, we have a, a few project ideas. So one is to facilitate bulk buys for homeowners working, working with manufacturers and trades enterprises um, for energy efficiency equipment that is used in home retrofits. So the, one of the best examples of that would be heat pumps um, or electric vehicle chargers. Second, to facilitate and coordinate a trades consortium of local contractors who are committed to work together to collectively develop and complete mass retrofit projects. Third, to actually go ahead and complete those projects. And so our goal is to complete one to three mass retrofit projects over the next two years. Actually, I think the goal is to complete two of them and have the third one ready to roll out. We're gonna see how that goes. It depends on the interest, what the size of the project is and the model that develops, but that's the basic goal. For the third goal, to position Ottawa to take advantage of emerging supports for national mass retrofits. Now, I want to be clear, these are emerging supports that have not yet emerged. And so we understand that this, this mass retrofit project is not just here in Ottawa. This is across the country and really across the world, but let's just focus it on Canada for now. So it's a huge project. And, and to make this project work, we will need some supports from, from all levels of government. Um, there are things that are starting to come come down the line right now. Um, we don't have the kind of unified support and a plan for the nation yet, but we're, we're optimistic that some of that support is gonna come through. And so we wanna make sure that Ottawa is positioned to take advantage of that as soon as it happens and really take action. So the three actions to, to point toward that are developing a, a data collection framework to track and analyze our progress in awareness and communications particularly. So how are we managing to raise awareness of retrofits and gain interest in this project in the Ottawa area? The second is similar to support a similar data collection framework and tool that, that collects data around regional uptake in net zero audits and the emissions reduction. So this is going to be really central for building larger projects. As you all know, any project that is aiming to reduce emissions needs to be accountable and needs to be able to report on what success are we having? Is all this money that we're pouring into it, all this effort, is it getting us somewhere? And so we need a tool that can provide that data for our region. And then related to all of that, working together with our regional partners to develop a regional action plan to meet our targets. And so we do have a, 
a general plan. We have some good ideas of the direction we need to go, but we're looking to really have a concrete plan that shows us, okay, these are the steps we need to take to actually get this rolling out on the ground here in Ottawa. I'm not going to go into detail into these outcomes because there's a lot of them, but this gives you, a, gives you an idea of some of the planned outcomes of the phase two project. And this is some more of them. Give you a chance to exercise your speed reading exercises. There will be opportunities to, to look at this presentation. At, we'll send out the presentation afterwards and, and there'll be lots of other opportunities to learn about the project. So I'm skimming through that quickly. Essentially, the rationale behind this whole phase two project is that we know that Ottawa is going to struggle to reach the required capacity to do these retrofits through our local efforts alone. It's a huge project. And so what can we do at the local level? That's the question we tried to ask. And so we identified that what, what we can do is we can identify what needs to be done here in the region, what can be done here in the region and do it. And then second, we can ensure that our approaches are developed in such a way that they can slot effectively into the larger national approach that's going to be required for success of the whole project. And so we picked out some ways that we think we can do that here in Ottawa to make sure that we are, we're doing all we can locally. The first one is to pilot scaled retrofit projects on the ground so that when, when the funding framework and resources emerge to be able to scale this project, we're ready to go. We need to build trades capacity. There is no way to move forward on these types of retrofit projects without that strong growing trades capacity. And then we need to develop a local approach that is able to replicate for a few reasons. One, so that we can have a core approach that we're able to start today, tomorrow, that has a certain capacity, but a capacity that can replicate so that we can really expand to meet those targets. And, and we don't wanna be building a model that shows no potential to expand to those mass numbers. Um, the other piece of that is, is to, to focus on the benefits to our local economy. Um, so making sure that our model can expand to include a large number of trades enterprises, small, medium, and large to, to support this type of work and, and really ensure that we're inclusive. And so finally, Ottawa can work to ensure that our approaches are are really in line with emerging national strategies. And so we would do that by making sure that we're, we're following the advice of leading policy experts and we're basing our project on previous success stories. So this is what we did when we built the original pilot project. We we'd looked at the research, we talked to different partners and we built our model based on that. This is what we've done for phase two as well. We've taken, taken our learnings and we've taken information from, from our partners across the country and really focused in on, on the best direction to go. So there are going to be opportunities to learn more about, about phase two. There is a lot more to be said about the details of this model, and, and we're excited to share that with the community, but uh, that could take all night. So that's the introduction to, to phase two, and I will, I'll leave it at that. Well, thank you for that, uh, Sharon. That was a good uh, overview of kind of what we have in store. Uh, next up, we'll hear from John Purgis, who is a senior associate with associate, excuse me, with the Natural Step Canada, a member of the Future Homes Ottawa Stakeholder Network, and a homeowner in Old Ottawa South. Today, we're welcoming John to share some of the upgrades he has already completed on his house and the next wave of planned improvements as part of his personal retrofit journey. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen now. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to hear all of the updates and talking about building stuff gets me excited. My dad used to build log cabins when I was a kid, so I have childhood memories of being on the construction site. And um, so what I've prepared today is just a little overview. I did a bunch of retrofit work on my house, which is in old Ottawa South, um, as Holly had mentioned. Nice to see you, Holly. Uh, the Enviro crew here is it's fantastic to see what they've been able to do. So in 2010, just after we built our house, we did the original energy audit and made a whole bunch of improvements. So the house was built in 1914. Uh, you know, raw basement, stone foundation, um, lots of moisture, old windows, no insulation in the walls, oil tank, et cetera, et cetera. And we made, we made a number of improvements uh, to the house at that time, uh, which, uh, which are now kind of obsolete. Like we did. our furnace, for example, doesn't qualify for any of the new uh, energy, uh, energy uh, rebates just because it's, even though it's 10 years old, it's, uh, and it was very efficient then, it's not anymore. 
Um, so lots of fun stuff. The only thing that I that it's not really part of the program right now, and I know Enviro Center does a lot of great work on this too, are things like the rainwater harvesting and then green building materials. That's something else that I, I look very closely for as well. Um, so I try to incorporate that in, in the retrofit work that I've done here. So I've had a lot of neighbors ask questions just because they know that I, I, I talk a lot on the street and they know that I, I'm handy and I've done a lot of the work here myself. So this is what uh, it's the old oil tank and then a new uh, gas furnace that's been that was installed. Lots of questions uh, for Andy today, uh, or there will be in your session on insulation. When I started researching insulation, I was I was a contractor. I had done lots of contracting work. There is so much good and bad literature out there around what to do with this old stone foundation that needs to breathe, that needs to be sealed properly. And there wasn't, you know, even 10 years ago, there, there wasn't great information. And so we, we kind of had to make a choice. So what we did, what I did in the basement is we built a wall that is about probably about three inches off the stone foundation so that we can completely seal the stone. My parents have a 210 year old house out in the country and they, they line theirs with a, with a uh, nice plastic sheet um, and then insulation on top of it. And it's worked well for about, um, 40 years since they put it in place, no rot, no issues with the stone. Uh, they also have a geothermal system uh, out there as well. So that's what we did in the basement. It, the spray foam has some chemical issues with it. I wasn't, uh, that was one of the things I had to wrestle with, but um, aside from that, it turned out pretty well. So this is kind of what it looks, looks like now as a finished, uh, part of the finished uh, product at the end. Um, nice, toasty and dry, same thing old, old wall here and that same window is here currently. We did dig the basement down a bit, uh, which has given us a lot more living space. And we are trying to keep within the context of, for those who do a lot of building stuff, there's a thing called the living building challenge, which is like the, the penultimate uh, guide to making your house super sustainable. Um, and one of the things they say is that you need to try and live within your current footprint of your house. So we made a lot of upgrades in, in the house that were uh, that would allow us to stick within the footprint of the house. And then some fun artsy stuff as well. Um, I, I do a lot of cycling, so building in some fun art and things into this. I think you might find one of Jen Steltzer's or her husband's rooms on in the uh, wall here. So a whole bunch of upgrades that were done in 2010. Um, and we're, I think the, the thing for that I tell people is that it's a phased approach. You're not going to get everything done at once. It costs too much. Unless you have something like a, a you, people might have heard of renovations where people un unfortunately get kicked out of the house and they get it gets renovated and then they can't afford to live there again. I'd like to see a renovation or a, a renovation where you get, you know, you enter a contest, the, the, the contractors pay for it. And while you're gone, your house gets gutted and totally renovated to net energy zero. That would be a fun prize to see. Um, so we're on a path this year. We do have, we did do another energy audit and we are moving towards um, towards net zero. We won't be completely there, uh, but very close. So more air sealing a little bit, uh, solar on the roof, uh, some window replacements. Um, eventually we will replace our gas furnace, which still has probably about five to 10 years of life in it. I'm hoping it's five, but there's embedded carbon in, in there that we need to capture and that doesn't qualify for grants at this point. And then also replacing hot water tank. Um, and that's, uh, that's kind of the direction that we're heading in. So I found in our neighborhood, there's lots of questions around what you do. Like con there are multiple things that contractors are telling homeowners because some of them just don't know. So that consistency in language and messaging and approach, especially for old home uh, insulation and other upgrades, I think is gonna be super, super helpful. Um, so I will leave it there. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah, thank you for that, John. Um, that was a very great presentation and I love to see the, the old homes kind of remaining in, uh, uh, livable as well as getting that additional basement space uh, looks uh, great. Um, 
So shortly, everybody will be able to have a chance to join one of our subject matter experts in the breakout room that will be opening shortly. Uh, there are going to be four rooms available today from topics ranging from solar to insulation, electrification of the uh, house, as well as electric vehicles. Uh, Andy Cockburn, who is leading the insulation breakout room, is the director of training and education with NEMA Canada, a nonprofit association representing fiber insulation manufacturers in Canada and North America. He's a Red Seal general contractor and a certified passive house consultant and former Algonquin College Perth Campus professor in construction carpentry advanced housing. David Cork in the solar breakout room is the founder and president of Solar Management Incorporated. He provides management and administrative oversight for six mid-sized solar projects owned in partnership with First Nations in Eastern Ontario. Trevor Freeman will be taking or talking about electrification and upgrading service panels. Trevor is a professional engineer, a certified energy manager, and is a member of BOMA Ottawa's Environment and Energy Committee. As a supervisor of Hydro Ottawa's key accounts team, he is committed to helping building owners, managers, and other stakeholders better manage their energy consumption and to take bold action as part of the ongoing energy transition to address climate change. And finally, Jennifer Seltzer, the Director of Community and Sustainability Programs here at Envira Center, will be leading the Electric Vehicle Breakout Room. Through her professional volunteer and advocacy work, she has demonstrated her ability to plan and implement quality programs and initiatives that are fun, inclusive, and engaging in various communities. The breakout rooms will be open for about 25 minutes, and we'll be able to choose which one you would like to go to. As a reminder, Jen will be in the electric vehicle room, Trevor in the electrification room, David in the solar room, and Andy in the insulation room. If you don't have the breakout pop, uh, breakout room pop-up in Zoom, there should be a small breakout room button along the bottom toolbar for you to choose from there. Good. Well, first of all, I would like to thank everybody for joining us um, this evening. Uh, I really enjoyed the event and I hope you enjoyed uh, it as well and, and uh, that um, you enjoyed your time in the breakout rooms and had all of your questions answered. And if not, uh, definitely reach out to us uh, through our different channels if there are things that we can answer for you moving forward. And as I highlighted in my last breakout room, Enviro Center is working on a, an additional series of workshops to get into some of the, the nuts and bolts specifically in this particular case around insulation. Um, I would also like to thank our speakers, Councillor Brockington, Holly Bickerton, John Perkis, Andy Cockburn, David uh, Cork, Trevor Freeman and Jennifer Steltzer. And lastly, I would be remiss without thanking and acknowledging our program funders and partners, the Ottawa Climate Action Fund, the Ottawa Energy Collective Impact Group, as well as Hydro Ottawa for supporting us through this Future Homes project. Um, of course, everyone in Enviro Centre who supported the event as well, our amazing tech team. Um, ben, thank you very much for facilitating. Um, and then of course, you can also find us at betterhomes Ottawa slash future homes or at envirocenter.ca. So I did wanna thank everyone and, and we have a few minutes left if there were any last minute questions that folks had. Uh, Pamela, no, the newsletters are uh, just in general. Uh, yes, we do have many newsletters sharing. Dan, did you have a question or a comment? <laughs> it wouldn't be a meeting without me having a question or a comment. <laughs> we look forward to them. <laughs> I, uh, I do have a question. Um, there's something that was raised that I don't know anything about. And sorry, Mel, to put you on the spot. Maybe you don't either. But um, there was a different Mel in my group on the solar panels who raised right to light. Uh, is there such a thing as a right to um, solar light? Like, what if your neighbor puts up a high rise? Can you sue for uh, the, the damage that, you know, is done for your lack of ability to put up solar panels? Or if you have solar panels, your loss of income of the solar panels? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, but wow, what a valuable question. Um, I, there is no right to light in Ottawa, says Janice. So she knows. Thank you, Janice, for joining us. 
Um, yeah, what a bummer, uh, for sure. I'm thinking in particular, I've got a couple of friends that live in Hintonburg that are having some pretty significant infills around them. And, and if they did have solar panels, they'd be, be out of uh, luck. Thank but you. Thank you. David? The opportunity would exist during the planning uh, application process to file a, um, a complaint or a point of view with the city in relation to the, the loss of, of sunlight or, or solar panels, whether existing or future. Thanks, John has posted a nice uh, link for us there. Uh, I believe, uh, Jane, we're going to get back to you with a response. I think Brody's given you a, a general response there. But yes, we have had an, an overwhelming uh, response to our loan uh, program to the City of Ottawa's Better Homes Ottawa Loan Program. You'll see some communications coming directly from Enviro Centre over the coming days here as we're updating folks. Um, but yeah, if you would like to reach out specifically uh, to Better Homes Ottawa, Darren will respond to you ASAP. Are there any other burning questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just scrolling through here. Uh, Jeff, that's a really good question. Are there any plans to target house flippers to encourage deep retrofits? I keep seeing these signs pop up in my neighborhood. We buy your house for cash and I have taken those phone numbers <laughs> like, uh, like crazy. And uh, I think that's a great opportunity because I'm watching them. I live in a 1950s neighborhood and they're coming in and gutting these houses and making them beautiful uh, with lots of cosmetic upgrades, but I would significant, I would doubt that they are making any significant energy upgrades. So uh, absolutely, um, I would suggest that's a great place to target. And Jane, we're reaching out to you directly. <laughs> okay, so with that, uh, again, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us uh, for this super well attended event. Really great to see all these folks. Thanks again to all our speakers. Really, really um, appreciative of your uh, attendance and, and knowledge and, and lesson sharing. Um, and I would suggest uh, stay tuned for more on phase two of Future Homes. <laughs>